Okay, that's all live now, Councillor. Thank you. Good evening. This is a meeting of the Commercialisation and Future Finance Subcommittee. This is a meeting of the Council which is being held remotely. The meeting is being recorded and streamed via YouTube where members of the public are able to watch the meeting. The recording will be available on the Council's website following the meeting. Please note that any comments posted on the chat feed of the Council's YouTube page during the recording of the meeting will not be monitored by the Council. Right, item one, apologies for absence. Uh, yes, Chairman, we have uh, Councillor David Burton Sampson substituting for Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, thank you. Item two, declarations of interest. Anybody got any declarations of interest? No declarations of interest, thank you. Item three, minutes of the meeting held on the 2nd of July. Count, although any comments? Or to, right, all those in favour, uh, Councillor Baggett first. Four. Councillor Rimmer. Four. And myself, four. Councillor Burton Sampson. Abstain. Abstain. Thank you very much. Item four, the procurement, commercial procurement update. Mr. Birkinshaw is going to present this presentation. Or tell us what it's about. I am chairman, yes. Um, I think at a high level, the report provides some assurance to members. Um, the commercial strategy, as this committee will be aware, encompasses a number of elements. Uh, the term com commercial itself encompasses a number of elements, but clearly within the strategy, and I think in all our minds, effective procurement um, is, is integral to a, a commercial approach across the council. And as I say, at a high level, this report seeks to provide assurance to members that we are seeking to identify areas where procurement uh, is opportunities to be more commercial in the way we procure specific areas of contract and also the way in which we as a council uh, enhance our procurement function and contract management. The assurance is provided in essence by the way of a review that was undertaken by Promote uh, as part of the LGA Productivity Experts Programme. Um, they undertook a piece of work uh, utilising the data the council had available uh, running it through various systems and algorithms that they have, and which sought to look at the um, opportunity that existed, uh, looked at the spend in terms of how much was against contract and how much was just against purchase order, and also looked at the complexity of delivering any savings. Uh, and arising from that was a prioritisation, and they presented back to us some opportunities where the council could explore further um, to realise some savings and improve the way it procured. The report sets out in enclosure number two, the key work streams arising from that that are being taken forward, uh, provides an overview of the scope of work that is being done um, and, and brief commentary on the timeline. And as I say, that's set out in enclosure number two. Um, I think it's worth uh, drawing reference in the report just to a couple of other areas. Um, where the identified some um, big barriers. So in terms of resourcing, the amount we spend on our staff resources and our interim resources, and also in ICT and particularly members of the policy and resources committee will be aware of the ICT strategy and the spend and, uh, and delivery through contracts that exists in that area. And it just identified some areas where we could um, refine those areas of work and those are touched upon in the report. And finally, the, and perhaps the main issue, the, the pieces of work that we out in enclosure number two are specific individual pieces of work and those will be delivered and happy to report back to this subcommittee probably towards the end of the year as these pieces of work conclude in quarter three uh, as is anticipated. But in terms of the longer term sustainable impact, the report did identify some areas where the council could improve and enhance its um, procurement and, and commercial approach. Uh, I think in fairness, those were not issues that were new to us. Uh, so we we're conscious of them, but always very helpful I think, to have that played back to us and bring it to our, our prominence. And I touch upon then uh, in the report um, towards the end. I think in, in summary around them, I think there is um, improvements that the council can make. I think we have uh, struggled to a degree to drive them forward. I think we've had key vacancies within the uh, legal section where corporate procurement fits and also in terms of the leadership of the commercial section where a vacancies also existed. 
Um, and so we've now filled them and we've got that provision to take it forward. I think there's a recognition that, that commercial and procurement sections need to work much more closely together to ensure, as the report says, that we're not just uh, complying with procurement legislation, but really driving out that value through the procurement process. And I think the service committees also have a role to play in that, um, which needs to be borne in mind as well. So as I say, Chairman, I have to take any questions and discussion, but the report at a high level just sets out to members that we are conscious that we uh, a procurement is a key part of our commercial strategy. There's opportunities for us and it's, um, we have plans to take some of them forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Birkinshaw. Before I bring Councillor Baggett in, who was the first to indicate, can I just ask you, Paul, the on enclosure two, there's four work streams being looked at. Is that the limit or are there others which could come into this at the next meeting, or are we just going to concentrate on these four? So yes, Chairman, it is them four that are being focused on. I think there's an issue around uh, capacity to deliver. I think, as I said, the, the piece of work that was done by Promote identified where the there was the greatest opportunity, and that was the greatest opportunity. And I think below that, then it's about us being um, better, perhaps, at how we do it and identifying them opportunities ourselves. I think one of the key issues from the the review and we're aware of is it's only as good as the data that we hold, and there's some work to improve that data. And I think, in in response to the question, we should be doing this regularly, uh, continually looking, but we need to uh, address some of the issues and take them good opportunities that exist first. Thank you, Paul. Councillor Baggett. Thank you, Chairman. I, I understand uh, Mr. Birkinshaw's point about this being high level. Uh, what I'm going to say here now actually applies really to the entire agenda before we go into part two. Uh, it also applies not just to, to this committee, but to policy and resources and the majority of the committees that have met um, in the last six to seven months. And that is here we, again, we have a report for noting. Now, when we are meeting and taking up uh, taxpayers' money and resources and officer time, I'd have thought that we should be, or, or the administration should be having at least a level of gumption to be able to find a decision that is being made. Because at best, it looks as if the council is an officer-led council now. Uh, at worst, it looks as if we're devoid of ideas. Um, and certainly an important committee like this, which uh, the leader has has wax lyrical on at the last minute about how he needs to get a grip of this committee, how it needs to be driving commerciality forwards, to then be sitting and just having report after report for noting um, doesn't do it justice. Uh, at the very least, when um, I was a leader, I ensured that when we took reports to committee, that there were decisions or decision points where members could be involved in the, in the in the report process. And it is a bit disappointing. So it's no criticism of you, um, Councillor Harrison, because you've stepped in today. Um, but in general, and, and again, when Councillor Burton Sampson was the was the chairman, um, a number of times we had items which were coming where decisions were being made. But there is this malaise that's starting to creep in now, right across the board. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure of the exact figure, but I did a, a rough head count. 95% of items that have come to committees over the last eight months have been for noting. Um, and, and that isn't good. I will, I will say this, Councillor Baggett, I haven't had many things noted on the committee I chair on the neighbourhood public spaces. Can I and just- you indeed I, are the exception that proves the rule. <laughs> Can I just say to ask Mr. Birkinshaw to respond because there's four work streams here. Can I ask the obvious question? When were these work streams last looked at in this manner? Uh, I think, I mean, I think Chairman, um, some time ago would probably be, um, uh, a reasonable answer out of the specific dates, but it's not the piece of work that we have, I'm aware that we've done recently um, in terms of these specific strands. Um, obviously the Morgan Sindle contract um, been in place a few years and I think it's, um, but not too long. So I think it's a, an opportune time to do that. I think some of the other areas have, 
have been identified. So, for example, the corporate works contracts, the issue there is that uh, in terms of the spend that is there, there's a, a significant proportion that is off contract and is done through purchase ordering and, and through proper procedures. But the issue is, is, the, is there going to be benefit uh, and savings realised by procuring more of those types of services through contract? Um, in terms of the uh, utilities, that, that was kicked about a bit, and I think there was work done uh, referencing the report around four or five years ago. But I would say, Chairman, in, in, in response, some time and not specifically in the way that we have uh, done this piece of work and are now progressing these matters. Thank you, Paul. Can I, can I just respond to Councillor Baggett again briefly? Is that when Councillor Burton Sampson was no longer Chairman of this committee, on the first meeting since then, we had to appoint a chairman, but the agenda was basically my agenda at that time. And one of the things I wanted to do was look at procurement and that was put on there. Now, I, I do accept what you say about noting, but some of these haven't been looked at for some time and they need, needed looking at. But I would suggest that the recommendation, we do note the contents, but I don't like the review is due to be completed in quarter three, October to December, that gives the three months. I will want to report back at the next meeting or the, or the October meeting for some decisions to be made on these items. Either we carry on as we are or we do things differently because otherwise I, I hate things being kicked into the long grass. Everybody knows me, knows that's my, I hate it. And on my committee, we're dealing with a play area review, which hadn't been conducted since 2006. Now, we need to do these things, and some of these need looking at. I'm, I don't know, personally, how, how long it's since the Morgan Sindel contract was reviewed. Um, but we're doing it now. So I take what your point you're making, Councillor Bagger. It, it is reasonably well made, but don't always bash the messenger. Councillor Burton Sampson. Yeah, I think I was first chair. I, I put my hand no, up. You, you were not. At the same time as Councillor Baggett. Well, B comes before S. Councillor Burton Sampson. As you've got the same time, Craig. Well, well, firstly, thank you, thank you, Chair, for, for bringing me in. Um, I, I was very much going to make the same point as you. I'm quite interested to know. Um, with, with these various work streams, when obviously we've got a project completion date on, on the, the corporate work contract review, but I would, I would too like to understand a bit more about the next steps, the, the, the timed um, um, actions for these. So when are they going to be completed by, and then where are those actions going to go to after that? Um, and I'd just also like to point out, just in, in response to the Councillor Baggett, if I may, that um, one thing this administration is not is void of ideas. Um, I think over the last 14 months, we've had a number of ideas and, and projects that have been initiated um, that uh, would put any administration to shame over recent years. So I'm proud of the ideas coming forward by this committee. And there is a decision going to be made tonight, albeit in part two, there will be a decision made tonight. So it's quite disingenuous to say that there's this administration is devoid of ideas because they are certainly not. Um, so if I may ask Mr. Birkinshaw, um, if you could give us some indication of when these projects are expecting to come to fruition and what the next steps are, that'd be great. Can I, Happy. Yeah. can I bring Councillor Rimmer in first so you can answer the questions in one go then, Paul? Yeah, certainly. Great. Councillor Rimmer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I was going to say, actually, echo completely what our, our leader of our group, Councillor Baggett, was saying in respect to this, and, and, and we've had a lot of reports for noting. And actually, there's nothing wrong with you asking for at least a steer on the scope and actually whether you've got the work streams right for what's actually being reviewed at this moment before we move on to the next um, phase in, in respect to coming back in October or coming back in December. There has to be a lot more interaction going on with the sort of policy making process that we as councillors 
members representing our residents. I think you're breaking up, up a little bit, uh, Councillor Rimmer. Sorry, I, I think it, it gave it, shall I try again? I was going to say, I echo what Councillor Baggett said. I think there needs to be more interaction with members. We can at least give a steer on the scope of any review that takes place, whether the work streams that have actually been agreed are the correct work streams before officers go ahead and progress on the report. That level of interaction could be done instead of purely asking us to note, and then we would be actually representing our, our residents in doing that, and truly using the committee system, which you so boast about, but actually seem to be trying to silence in this period with bringing forward a lot of reports purely for noting. Thank you, Councillor Rimmer. I think from what's been said to date, I tend to agree that it's rather than note, I think we should decide tonight whether these four streams are the correct ones. I think they are, for one simple reason. Some of them um, relate to central stores at Barley Lands. And the, the important thing about all of them is getting the IT systems right, correct, right across the council, in my view. Was in, especially at the depot where we've been dealing with paper passing around for far too long. So we can quite clearly discuss as the stores review, the utilities contract review, the Morgan Sindel contract review, and the corporate works contract review. If you read what's put down there, I think they are reviews that are being undertaken, should continue to be undertaken, and perhaps in noting that they are or agreeing that they are the correct ones, we then ask for the next stage report to come to this committee, this subcommittee in the first instance at the next meeting. And it may well be that some of the items need to be referred to the service committees to pick up um, because they, they, they will cut across different areas. I think I'm correct. I'm sure officers will tell me if I'm wrong. Councillor Baggett's going to tell me first. I would, never, I would never tell you any. I would never tell you anything, Councillor Harrison. Um, no, I was. I was going to um, agree that I, that I, 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 taking it forward, this is a start. But just to give an example, because I take on board Councillor Burton's uh, point, uh, I did say prior to part two there were no yes. decisions. Um, but for instance, let's look at the Morgan Sindel contract itself. Normally, when you procure a contract, you procure it for a period of time and you have a you, you set a set of criteria which you would expect Morgan Sindel to uh, be adhering to. And in the days when we had scrutiny, you remember those good old days when we scrutinized things and checked to make sure things were going OK? What you'd be doing is you'd be reviewing that contract as part of the scrutiny process. So when we say now we want to review it, the questions I would be wanting to, to get answers to is review it based upon what? Uh, are there concerns about performance, which has caused the, the, the desire for review? Are they running out of contract, in which case are they thinking about re-procuring um, direct rather than going out to a wider tender? Uh, I, what is the foundation behind um, any, any review of that contract? And what happens if it's found that there are issues within that contract? Now, it could also be it's looking to add values to the contract, like social value or or anything else. I mean, one of the things that we, we've always done well, irrespective to administration of Balladon, is we've put into procurement contracts the requirement for apprenticeships. What we've done really badly is follow that up as to how many apprenticeships we've got, what the success rate has been, and where those people have come from, and how we could actually use that as a platform for uh, a, a wider education role, knowing that in, in the borough, uh, this is, is one of the things where it, it's, a, it's a weakness. So, just saying we're going to review this without being able to get into all that sort of level of challenge and understanding doesn't do it justice and that's what this committee should be about so i agree with you councillor harrison maybe what happens is we can we we could agree that those are the right work streams but without understanding what's underneath them how can we agree that they're the right work streams what other work streams are that were considered that we're not aware of for instance uh, it would have been nice to have had some sort of input to say, well, actually, you've said those four, but is there something else? What was the reason why these four have come to to, to, to us now? Uh, is it they're the only four or have they been prioritised? And if so, 
how were they prioritised? I mean, this is just a standard level of challenge that you would expect members to want to be getting involved with in the decision making process. So uh, while I, I agree that there's a decision to be made, it's having that level of understanding. And maybe if the report had included some um, depth and detail to that, then we'd be having a slightly different conversation uh, than we currently are. Thank you, Councillor Baggett. Uh, Mr. Birkinshaw, you wish to come in? Yes, Chairman. Um, and obviously the report is here before you in order that you can ask them questions and get that challenge. And so I'll seek to respond to some of the points. Um, I think there's a lot of discussion around the process, but I think it's here to, to try and answer some of them. Um, I think in the, the approach and why, why these were chosen, so the review that was undertaken, as I mentioned, there was a, a methodology to it. Um, so the promoter who undertook the work completed a review of our spend profile over the last two and a half years. Uh, looked at a number of data, including the accounts payable ledger, contract database, published spend, contract documentation, uh, and also held a number of workshops to validate the data, understand the business context, current challenges, etc. So I think it's important, uh, as a reference, to understand that there is a methodology and a science behind the selection of these that, that was undertaken, and what Promote presented back to us was some areas where they felt there was the best opportunity. Um, we've not um, then distilled a list of 20 down to four. Um, the, the, there's these four key areas and there's those others which I have referenced in the report and that's based on their analysis of the um, spend that was there. Um, so there is that, that methodology that, that exists. I think in terms of the, the work that's been undertaken in response to Councillor Burton Sampson's point, for example, the corporate works contract, if we look at that, so that was an area where it encompasses a large number of different uh, services that the council requires assistance with. And, and as I said, large amounts were through purchase orders as opposed to a, a, an overall contract or a framework. So work has commenced on that. And at the moment, it's the gathering of all that spend and data to develop contract specification framework upon which the council will then go out to procurement for a range of services in order that a much larger percentage of spend is against the contract, which we know will drive better value through effective procurement and contract arrangements and management rather than one-off individual spend. So the next stage is to produce that specification. And the stage after that is of course, to go out to procurement for all them services and that framework that exists. These are services which obviously the council uses, um, so we need to procure them in the most effective way. The Morgan Sindel contract, I think it's simple recognition. It's the um, it's a huge contract, both in terms of its life and its spend, and it's important that the council ensures that it's effectively managing that contract and getting best value from it. Uh, effective working relationships exist. And an overview of the scope of the further work which will be undertaken by Promote is set out in the enclosure. Uh, and likewise with the utilities in terms of a, a large area of spend um, and some work that's been ongoing for some time that, that needs to be done. So I think the there are different stages. There are in terms of the stores review that's been undertaken primarily and is now at the next stages for officers to consider um, in consultation with members what might be the way forward on that. But I think in fairness, when it was initially looked at in terms of the, the spend on some of the various stationary equipment, it actually boiled down to it being there's not a huge amount of spend. So any changes in the procurement would result in minimal value. And actually the, the more opportune uh, issue is the way in which we do it. So rather than centrally, do we have provision in place where services can quickly and easily procure it? And in essence, we uh, minimize the amount of resource and process internally for the council. Uh, so they're all at different um, elements. The utilities, the Morgan Sindel and the contract corporate works are, are all at the very early stages um, of initiation. I'd be happy to bring a report back to the meeting in October to provide an update on, on those. As I say, in terms of particularly the Morgan Sindel and the utilities, I think we bring back the findings of them further work. So there'll be an opportunity for members to influence and, and steer that. I think the corporate works, happy to bring the specification back to members if they wish to see the contract specification uh, before we go out for that framework. Um, so I think it was uh, to a degree an issue of how much do members want to see, uh, understand and where can that influence be? And obviously we're happy to work with members to, to facilitate that. But this was 
uh, an opening report in, in that respect. But as I say, there was a, a science behind it, but it is something which we should be more regularly doing. And I think that does then pick up the points that councillors Bagger and, and Rimmer particularly raised about how we do this long term, how we engage members in, in looking at the contracts. And I did mention at the outset in the introduction about the role of members and, and service committees being important in the procurement process. And I, I think even going back to the to the time when and Councillor Baggett was leader and perhaps before and after, the role of committees in the procurement process is an area which I think we can continually develop and improve. So I take on board the, the comments. It was difficult in terms of level of um, uh, information to put. It, it is an opening and happy to come back to members with, with more detail um, and to bring this back in October uh, to, to further that discussion. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Mr. Logan. Thank you, Chairman. And just to pick, um, a pick up a, a more general point around what Paul was saying rather than the specific report, you know, as, as members know, apart from Councillor Burton Sampson, uh, there was a, a challenging meeting last time around our, uh, as you, your terms, Councillor Harrison, kicking things into the long grass and about what the officers were doing uh, around commercial. Uh, and uh, a very strong chance from Councillor Baggett, who has been wedded to commercial and pushing officers for, for some time. So uh, the purpose of, of a number of these reports was actually bringing members updates on where uh, commercial is a very wide spectrum. And there's lots of things that take some time to get to decisions. And there's lots of work that goes on behind them. Some things are kicked in the long grass because arguably they're not going to go anywhere and won't deliver on any commercial opportunities. But it doesn't mean there's not a lot of work going on. And later on the agenda, uh, you'll see a presentation from myself to give you some confidence around what officers are doing and bringing to you things early. And it may be the wording around noting, I'll speak to Paul about whether that's the right wording, but it's about getting members involved early before decisions you know, are needed. So you're involved in the priorities, what you want brought back forward early, some of the work that's going on and influencing the, the work. So that's why you're getting a number of opportunities about noting to be involved at the earliest stage, which is what you requested. Now, clearly from that influencing role, then we can bring further reports when the decisions are needed in terms of the final decisions. So that was the purpose as well. You're getting lots of, of noting reports at the stage. And I will say, obviously, it was only four weeks ago when we have started in earnest to, to really bring some of these things uh, as quickly forward as possible. So I didn't want um, a members to think we weren't doing anything in, in, in the process. So we have been working hard, uh, and you'll see from our presentations later on, which are more to give you confidence that things are happening and they will be coming forward as quickly as possible for decisions to, towards, you know, the much needed budget gap, as you will know, which commercial was designed to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Can I just say the recommendation I would like to make to it, change to is that the subcommittee agrees the work streams being reviewed and asks for a further report on those at the next meeting or the, in, in, in the October meeting. I'm not sure if there is one before that in October. I believe the next meeting is September, Councillor Harrison. OK, it'll be September then. Have I got a seconder? David, Councillor Burton Sampson, thank you. Councillor Baggett, you wish to come in. Thank you, Chairman, um, and thank you, Mr. Logan, for his comments, which are appreciated. Um, and I know he will know where I'm coming from when I say what I'm saying now. Um, and by the way, there's no criticism here of officers in any respect or the work they've done at what has been an incredibly difficult time for the council. And I, I thank officers at every single level for the work they've done. But what it is about is it's about the responsibility that you expect chairmen to take when they're chairing a committee. And it's the responsibility of a chairman, really, to bring a report to a committee and say either, I want some action on this or I don't. So it's not an officer's fault. It's the, it's the, it's the chairman who ultimately should take the responsibility. And in fact, when we're in administration, uh, I made it a point that the reports are actually produced wherever possible by the chairman rather than an officer, uh, because chairman shouldn't be able to duck that issue. But Mr. Birkinshaw didn't answer a number of the questions that I asked. And to be fair, I wouldn't necessarily expect him to because it's going into a level of detail that maybe isn't, that should have happened before we got to this stage. But one question I have for Mr. Birkinshaw is, he said that there was a methodology which was put into place in order to have a process 
that arrived at, at these these areas of work. I, I'm curious, what member input was there to the methodology? Because if there's no mem member input into the methodology that actually arrives at what we're doing now, then it's obviously led council. Members haven't been consulted. So I'd, I'd like to know really what member input, and if there was member input, um, how that was done, what committee it went to, and, and, and how that worked. Um, the second question, again, it's, it's about Morgan Sindel, because Mr. Burkish was absolutely right. Morgan Sindel is a massive contract. Now, I raised this when um, I, I was leader about the, about the, the length of the contract and everything else, and was reassured by officers that, in fact, um, there's a very good uh, officer team, which there was, uh, managing that contract, very good relationships with Morgan Sindel. Uh, by having a long-term contract, which I get, it allows you to put in far more into the contract and get far more value out of it than when you've got a constant recycling of contract and recycling of procurement. And we have to remember the procurement is, is damn expensive as well, especially under the, the, the OJU uh, process. But what I'm curious about now is, is I'm not sure that the management team that we had managing that contract is still around in the council anymore. And I'm curious as to who it is that is managing it. Because if we're saying that one of these work streams is, is part of the management of the Morgan Sindel contract, is that because the officer team have changed? Is it because it doesn't fit within a particular remit right now? Because in the olden days, this is something that would have gone to housing because it's, it's Morgan Sindel are predominantly dealing with housing. So why has it come here as opposed to housing? Uh, I don't understand any of that. So maybe a bit of clarity as to why the Morgan Sindel contract is coming here rather than housing, and also what input members had to the methodology that arrived at why it is we're looking at this particular set of work streams. Thank you, Councillor Bagot. Mr. Birkinshaw, do you wish to come? I can, yeah. I mean, members didn't have any input into the methodology, and, and nor would I expect any member would any members would do or have done in the past, really. Um, as I mentioned, the, the work of Promote was through the LGA Productivity Experts Programme, so it was uh, actually funded by the LGA and was um, following uh, other other pieces of work that had been done elsewhere. So I think the, I mean, in terms of the, the methodology, just looked at what, what the data was and analyze and, and analyze certain elements of it. Um, but the answer is that members didn't, and I, I, I don't feel that there's anything necessarily um, untoward around that. I think in terms of why why is the Morgan Sindel contract coming here and not housing? I don't think it is it is coming here. I think what we're, you know, this, this committee and, and there is, um, conflicts but issues around how this subcommittee and, and the remit of policy and resources with regards to commercial and procurement cuts across the remit of other service committees because procurement covers all service committees um, and, and different ones um, in, in that regard so I think this primarily uh, and the reason for it is, is seeking to demonstrate to the commercial subcommittee that as a key part of its commercial strategy which is effective procurement that work is being done in that regard um, if clearly if there was any issues that merited review of the contract in terms of contract changes or specifications, then yes, that would be a matter for housing. But as I said, at a high level, this seeks to provide members with assurance that we are um, seeking to address uh, issues of procurement as part of the commercial strategy. Councillor Rimmer. Uh, th thank you. Um, just going on that, I appreciate what you're saying about the methodology appreciate what you're saying about the work streams that you produce that you've used promote to come up with these and then that analyzes and these are the most important but where do we get involved in the process where do we get to challenge this and say actually why haven't you started to look at more dynamic procurement in terms of the consultancy firms that they're actually using for the town master plan for instance and are being part of the presentation process um, some of us, and we've had comment, are thinking it feels a bit consultant heavy, but that's anecdotal. Why can't we have an analysis, a review of that to see if the council's doing the right thing, if it's getting um, the best value for its pound um, in, in terms of um, more dynamic procurement as well? I think it's our duty as members to put those challenges and ask in this, at this juncture, that perhaps 
other areas should be added to work streams or looked at as well as the more mature um, procurement process that we're really to work stream. Uh, thank you, Councillor Rimmer. I'm assuming that we are going to go down that road because this, to me, this is a, is the start of the process. We're looking at these, and if there's changes to be made, I'm assuming that from all this there will be suggestions of change, which will then obviously go, because we're a subcommittee of PNR to go to PNR. Um, we are looking at the commercial aspects, basically. Councillor Baggard. Thank you, Chairman. And I, I promise this is probably the last I'm going to say on this particular matter for you. Um, you, you moved an amendment, and I, I would have liked to have supported it, but it's based upon the flawed premise of the methodology and what we're looking at in the first place. Let me just give you two scenarios. Scenario one is what we have here today, where, and, and I, I take on board what Mr. Birkinshaw said, but there's one bit I don't agree with him on at all, which is officers go away to some folk at the LGA and say, give us some sort of metrics for what it is we should be looking at at the council, uh, and then come back and present a report that says we're looking at A, B, C, and D. Second scenario is, Officers have a dialogue with members and say, what's important to you? You're the elected members. What's important to the public? What's important to you as far as what you think we should be looking at to make this, this, this council as efficient as we can? And members have a dialogue and go, what sort of stuff have you got for us? Oh, we like that. Or actually, instead of that, what we're finding is maybe what we should be looking at is um, this or this or this. And there is a dialogue which actually allows us to get to the point we are today on saying these are the work streams. I am a favour of option B, and what I'm having presented here is option A. So even while I understand the, the merit of, of, of what you're proposing with the amendment, it's based upon the false premise that we are being told by officers, and all due respect to professional officers, that this is the most important things for the council. And I just think that members might have a different view if they'd have been given that information before tonight. Thank you, Councillor Baggett. Mr. Birkinshaw. Yeah, just respond to them two points. I mean, I think Councillor Rimmer refers to dynamic procurement. I think you mean referring to procurement of specific goods and services on potentially a one off basis. And obviously, I would just remind members that we do have contract procedure rules set out in the Constitution, and then the Council does uh, comply with the contract procedure rules in terms of tendering uh, and award of them contract through members as appropriate. Um, and, and many procurements uh, do go through members. So, uh, I think that is, but I think as the, you know, always um, areas for improvement in that regard. I think in, in Councillor Baggett's point, I think there's a contradiction. I mean, we asked members at every service committee, what would you like to look at on your work programme? Uh, and it's, it's the opportunity for members to identify issues that those elected members feel should be looked at. And as Councillor Baggett rightly says, the service committees are responsible for some of them. So there is the opportunity through the service committees to look at some of the uh, specific uh, contracts, procurement issues that that committee feels need, need looking at. So uh, I'm a bit, um, I think that opportunity is plentiful there for members to identify them. The purpose of this was to look at the, the spend, a very financial data driven and where there was opportunities to um, explore further um, based on the analysis of that data, I, I fully acknowledge that analysis of spend and contracts and purchase ledgers is very different to members' experience um, and, and what they're hearing from their constituents in, in, in the borough. And, and both, I think, have equal uh, value, perhaps the latter more so, um, because ultimately it is about serving them residents. But I, I, do, I think the two are... Um, have specific purposes and individual merits in themselves and I think this is one element but clearly if members have other areas to explore then the service committees are the um that provide the opportunity for do that and I'm sure officers would be willing to speak to any member and work with them as well in terms of any issues that they may come across so I think it's important that we don't deal with the hole in, in this specific piece of work that that was done. Uh, thank you Mr Birkinshaw. Can I ask, ask you a question? The methodology you used uh, is it available? Happy to provide members with details, yeah, of how it was done. It's probably a single sheet of paper, is it, or a bit more than that? Yeah, probably, yeah. 
No, I'll certainly uh, provide that to members of the committee. That's the bag that's laughing, but I mean, I, you never know, do you? How big, how big it is when you ask. Um, yeah, I'm just happy to provide that to members. Well, I'm useful. happy, you know. I mean, if members are happy with that, I'm, I'm happy to add that the subcommittee agrees the work stream is being reviewed, asks for a report back in September, and members of this committee be supplied with a methodology in uh, sorting out, if you like the words, I can't get the word out really, for of the work streams. Is that fairly clear? Yeah, for me it is. <laughs> Councillor Bagger, I'm going to ask you if it's clear. <laughs> okay, if, if it's clear, can I put that to the meeting? Um, I'll try and find out if it's clear by asking Councillor Bagger first if he's for or against. Abstain. Abstain. Councillor Burton Sampson. For. Councillor Rimmer. Say, and I'm four. That's carried. Thank you. Right. We'll now move on to item five. Oh, so, sorry, Chair. I, I guess carried on your on your casting vote. You abstained. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Apologies. I don't want to use a casting vote, but it's two in favour. <laughs> You're, You're absolutely right. <laughs> I'd be sound like Donald Trump, wouldn't I? Um, item <laughs> item five. Climate and environmental commercial update. Uh, Mr. Brace is here to do that. That's pages 23 to 27 on the agenda. Mr. Brace. Uh, good evening, members, and thank you, Chairman. Um, this is um, not necessarily new work to the authority, but um, the, re the update um, is to let you know how we are going to be approaching it, giving uh, the changes in government policy that are coming through the environmental bill and also the opportunities really for this committee that we'll be bringing to you as and when we have more details, uh, climate and environment uh, issues. I apologise in advance, but my uh, internet connection is not very well tonight. So uh, what I've set out uh, in the report for you uh, today is that um, uh, our, we will be bringing a policy uh, to the appropriate committees um, uh, later on this year. Uh, and I'm just giving you a flavour of our current thinking and the work that, that we are doing, obviously, for members to import. One of the major parts that we will be looking at is, is obviously the commercial aspects that are available to us. Sorry, my disappearing, Councillor. No, Can you hear me? All right. It's just it's all right. good hesitations there. So sorry, it's um, <laughs> the internet keeps coming up saying it's unstable. So I apologise for that. Um, so there are opportunities that we will be looking at that that do give us a commercial opportunity, um, and we would rather have a policy by which and a strategy by which we are working to be able to deliver. We're losing you, Paul. Um, so we are playing a little bit of catch up, um, but our policy and strategy, as I said, will be coming later this year. And we have got some additional resources to come in and assist us um, that has done an enormous amount of work, particularly around buildings. We have lots of them uh, and to support our our officers in shaping um, need to a, re become more efficient building, uh, contribute to carbon reduction. Um, you are well aware of the air quality issues the borough has. So all this will be able to be encapsulated in a policy um, and strategy. But uh, what I'm setting out for you tonight is some of the things that uh, we are currently being approached with uh, currently, which we will bring to this committee shortly, uh, or when we have enough detail to be able to present them. Uh, even be charging four courts. These are the future petrol stations. We have had an approach from a company um, that um, have done some work in Braintree. Uh, planning permission is, is either in or is shortly to be in. Um, and we are talking to, to them about potential uh, development within the borough. Um, district heating systems. Um, we do know that 
uh, we have uh, several or one certainly at Langdon Hills uh, that needs replacing, which we are looking at how else we could expand. Uh, and and also, obviously, with the town centre, with a number of buildings of how potentially uh, a heating system there could work, uh, as well as a waste system. Um, new to the market, really, are some green street furniture. So this is benches uh, that improve, for example, air quality um, and also solar lighting. Uh, so street lighting will effectively uh, be for free in terms of energy supply to them. So we are we are currently looking at some of the new technology in that. Uh, um, as many authorities have done, we um, are looking for potential for solar farm that may or may not be possible within the borough, but we may look outside borough if necessary, but it's looking to see if there is a commercial opportunity for us in that. Um, and um, I'm sure members are aware we've been working with a company called People2 that have said there is the opportunity for commercial um, work in a trading company for our trade waste. So we're currently considering uh, whether that is an option for Basildon and that will go back to um, spaces as part of the waste strategy. But this is particularly a commercial opportunity. So felt it was right and appropriate uh, to talk to you about that. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, as Scott said earlier, we, we are doing some work. So we thought it was right time to, to let you know where we are and the whole piece of work in terms of policy strategy and delivery plan, and also the commercial opportunities that are currently bouncing around. So happy to take any questions. Thank you. Councillor Rimmer first, then Councillor Bagger. Questions. Uh, thank you. It, on this trade wasting, uh, sorry, the trade waste company, I, I, I would like to seek some sort of reassurance because I've got grave concerns about how um, the Basel and Borough and Pitsy in particular are taking more waste from Essex than, uh, and, and have consistently done so over decades. And I, I want a reassurance that this will not mean extra waste coming into the borough from outside of the borough. Um, and that, that, that would be, and as absurd as that may sound to you, I feel I need to have that reassurance for my residents. So that's one of the points I'd, I'd love you to address. Um, the other is in respect of the solar lighting idea in terms of having the solar panels on the lights. Um, in, in hot sunny climes, you, you can see that definitely working. And I, I have seen that. Um, in terms of um, the UK, in terms of Essex, have, have we got an evidence base that it works here? and does consistently provide free lighting um, with a slightly more cloudy, um, <laughs> variable weather um, was one of the things. In terms of solar farms, I, obviously we had something come forward to planning that previously been in planning where they'd use actually part of the green belt to create some sort of solar farm. Um, can we get reassurance that no further green belt land would actually be utilised for, for solar farms. Um, Can I bring Councillor Baggett in first, Mr Brace? So thank you, Councillor. Would you like me to answer now, Chairman? Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of trade waste, we currently run a, a trade waste service. Carry on. Sorry. So if I bring Councillor yep. Baggett in first, you can answer yep, okay. in one fell swoop. Yeah, no problem. Because Councillor Burson sansom is coming in afterwards. Councillor Baggett. Yeah, I have one question. Depending on the answer to that, I might have another. But of course, I'm very happy to ask the question, get the answer, defer to Councillor Burton Sampson, and then come back with the supplementary if there is one. So I'm very happy to be accommodating because that's the way I roll. Um, I'm just curious with the, the policy that we're putting together here, what member input has been to date and what member input is planned and how that's going to, to roll out to, to get uh, member input on, on this what is quite an important policy. Mr. Brace, on that question. Um, well, discussions have already uh, happened with the leading member, uh, Councillor Harrison, that we're building it uh, and with the leader, but we're getting information together to present information through the appropriate committee. As with all policies, we like to have some good information to provide members to help make the decision. As I've said here, this is our current thinking. This is our draft. And then we'll engage members as we always do through the process of development of policy. 
Um, but certainly with the change in policy nationally, um, we've got to do a bit of work um, for us to catch up on learning, to be able to present that to members on what's changed and what we need to do. So that's why we're we're approaching it in, in this way as quickly as we can. Thank you, Mr. Bain. As we have some challenging targets ahead. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Councillor Bagger. Oh, I answered you... it. Apologies. <laughs> Councillor Bagger, did you want to come back then? Yeah, just a quick one, really. I'm just curious how much, if at all, the recent officer trip with a leader to Sweden uh, to have a look at waste plants, disposal, heating and everything else uh, is informing this policy that's now being put together, uh, which members so far haven't had any input into. Uh, I can't answer that. So I'll ask David. Uh, Council, just to clarify, the policy has... Uh, the I'm going to call Councillor Burton Sampson in next. Paul, if you turned your video off, it might help the sound. Okay. It does sometimes. Councillor Burton Sampson. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, and and just, just, just to give Councillor Baggett some, some assurance, when I was chair of this committee, and I'm sure it continues, I used to have regular uh, briefings with, with uh, Mr Carrigan um, and also with Mr Sparks um, just around some of the opportunities that were coming forward. Uh, Councillor Harrison as Vice Chair used to join me on those briefings and we often used to talk through the opportunities and which ones in particular we would like to be pursued um, to, to obviously bring forward to the wider um, membership of the council. Um, so I can give you assurances that those conversations were happening in the past and I'm pretty sure, um, obviously I can't answer for Councillor Callaghan, but I'm pretty sure the same level of briefings are happening now. Um, uh, on, on the point, I, I think these, uh, and interestingly, a couple of these points were things that we, we, we were discussing earlier in the year, um, such as the district heating systems and the EV charging points. What I'd be quite interested to see, um, especially given that this is the commercialization committee and we are looking at commercial is, is what's the opportunity here? So what's the financial opportunity? And I know sometimes it's, it's difficult to quantify when you're exploring, but there must be some examples of um, where some of these projects have been used elsewhere, um, what the potential opportunity is on the back of that income for the council. Um, you know, certainly it'll be interesting to see some of the stuff around the green street furniture, um, the solar farms and so on and so forth, just to understand from a, a quantity point of view, what this could look like and how this could impact the finances of the council. Um, so I don't know if that's possible to, to maybe next time this report is brought forward to have some of those examples included in there. Uh, thank you. Can I, can I just say on these some of these items here, uh, Mr. Brace has been in discussions with me over the last few months because of the Income and Environmental Bill, which is going through the House of Commons. I think it's had its second reading. And there's certain things that have to going to have to be in place in a certain time scale. So we have been looking to see how this council can work towards meeting the requirements in that bill when it becomes an act. On the question of a trip to Malmo, uh, I didn't know about that. I have my trips are mainly around the borough. Sometimes I get down to the depot. Mr. Brace. Um, if I come uh, to Councillor Rimmer's question around trade waste, uh, Councillor, we already have, just to clarify, we have a trade waste service currently, which means obviously it collects from our businesses in the borough, and it is felt that we could expand our business within the borough if we were a trading arm to the council. It gives us more flexibility to be able to trade within the borough. It would not bring any additional waste to the borough. Uh, in fact, it may be going out to the borough as it currently is to elsewhere. So it's not about increasing the waste coming to the borough. It's about us having the opportunity to collect far more in the borough that is already being collected. Um, solar uh, and solar farms, uh, solar light, um, until I see this new technology... Mm. 
um, that is being talked about. I, I, I can't answer your question of whether it will work or not work. What I can say is UV light is available uh, throughout the year in our country, probably not as much as where you are now, obviously, but certainly there is uh, UV light and uh, we are told that it will work as all people do, that it will work in in uh, the, the northern hemisphere where we are and further away from the equator than certainly Spain is. So we, we do need to do a lot more digging, but it's giving you the highlight that we're looking at it. It is new technology and we will we will see it's certainly better than some of the technology. Solar farms we are looking at, but again, we know uh, members uh, members' views around Greenbelt, et cetera, but we need to explore it if it's, it, but I bring that to members to make that decision. It certainly wouldn't be for me to make the decision not to pursue something pursue something that could commercially benefit the country, uh, the, count, the council um, because it was on Greenbelt. That is a decision for members to make, not for me as an officer. Thank you. Um, in terms of... Uh, Sorry, carry on. Oh, I was just going to ask Councillor one very quick thing. thing. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Mr. Blaze, just finish your point you're making. Um, to Councillor Burton Sampson, yes, absolutely. I think uh, charging points is is new really as an income stream to us in the town. We have put some already in, as you well know, in some of the car parks, Lake Meadows, uh, the latest that will be in. So we'll be able to see what the patterns are and then we'll be able to understand a bit better what potentially the commercial opportunity is which clearly is going as a massive financial opportunity but i think that's one that's going to grow very quickly over the next three or four years so we want to be in the game first rather than be swamped by other people taking the opportunity earlier which means we lose the opportunity so that's why we want to be in the game early and as quickly as we can we will bring you back reports on that thank you councillor rimmer uh, thank you chair I, I was just wondering if we could then at least have that I know the minutes, the way our house style is on the minutes, it wouldn't necessarily capture what uh, Mr. Brace just said in terms of that reassurance, which really reassured me that we wouldn't be bringing in extra waste into the borough. I, I'm hoping that that point can actually be captured in the minutes at least or in, in, in documented. Thank you. Um, that, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rimmer. I mean, Sorry, Councillor Harrison, can I come back on that one, please? I can't see. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'll put my hand up and then realise you couldn't see me. Uh, Councillor Rimmer, I think um, the reassurance bill that we will have to deliver as an authority is reducing waste. Um, it's not about more. So the significant work that we're going to have to do on trade waste and domestic waste is avoiding the waste being there. So that means that the producers, that means shops, that means supermarkets have got to change their way. It will be law. Um, so we should see a reduction in waste across the whole country and particularly to our, our town. So that's why we want to be able to to get a grip of trade waste so that we can really drive waste down in the borough rather than the, the significant amount of waste that we are generating around one tonne per household at the moment. We are the highest in Essex and we do need to get that down. So um, that's that will be the reason, uh, the main reason by which we want to do these things is, is to drive it down, not to increase bringing more waste in. That's exactly the opposite of what we'll be trying to do. So that's that's the reassurance that I'd like to give you. We're reducing, not increasing. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brace. Can I just add to that? I'm hopeful that, um, Mr. Mr. Brace will correct me if I'm wrong, I'm hopeful that by the September meeting of the Neighbourhood and Public Spaces Committee, there'll be the first report coming in on waste strategy and how we might want to proceed. Um, I'm hopeful. Yes, it will, Councillor. It will yes, it will. Yeah. Yep. So, what Mr. Brace has said is absolutely correct. We've got to reduce the amount of waste produced in this borough. We haven't got an alternative. Councillor Baggett. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I mean, first of all, um, to Councillor Burton Sampson's point uh, from when he was chairing this committee. Yeah, I've got to say, absolutely right. And, and I mean this sincerely. Uh, it was a pleasure to be on this committee with you as Chairman and with Councillor Harrison. Uh, because it was a committee that you felt we were all working together, irrespective to political ideology, to get things done. Uh, and it was very much of a, let's listen to the input from all members and we'll make reasoned decisions from that. 
and I, and I applaud you for that, and I, I thank you for it. And I said earlier before we started the YouTube, welcome back, and, and I meant that genuinely um, uh, today. Uh, it's just unfortunate that not all of the administration have the same ethos. Now, we, Mr. Brace spoke earlier about how as part of this policy, we're looking at maybe heating systems, uh, waste disposal, all sorts of things, quite rightfully that we should be. So I just find it a little bit disturbing that you've got officers and the leader of the council jolly off to, not jolly, sorry, wrong word, that they, they go off to uh, Sweden on a fact-finding mission to look at heating systems and how waste is done, that the chairman of the committee that's going to make the decisions on the policy isn't even aware that they've gone. You've got a leader of the council that, that will tweet what he has for breakfast because if it feels that he's going to get some mileage out of it, and yet is silent on, on that particular trip. Uh, and the council, who are very good at promoting what it is they're doing, don't mention at all that such a, a, a trip has been done in the benefits because obviously the taxpayer pay for these sort of things and, and the taxpayers might want to know what the benefit is. Now in the past, whenever there's been uh, any form of, of trip and, and I personally recognize why we need to do them. Uh, and I'm, I'm not one of these uh, all due respect to the taxpayers Alliance, but the idea that you, you shouldn't go to places or explore things uh, is actually uh, incredibly 18th century thinking in, in, in the modern age. You can learn a lot and sometimes you learn about things on the ground. But I'm a concerned that, that this was, was a bit of a mystery to one of the chief decision makers uh, where the policy is coming to. But secondly, it just, it implies that a policy is being formulated based upon facts and, and things that have been um, uncovered or, or, or discovered uh, in Sweden that members haven't had the ability to know about or contribute to. And I think that is a little bit unfortunate. And it gives the impression that this isn't a council where uh, members make the decisions. It's a council where one or two specific members make the decisions and then tell the rest of the Alliance which way to jump when that decision has been made. Oh, I don't jump. Oh, no, you don't, especially not your age. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> point taken, point taken. Um, can I just ask a question then? I did not know about this Malmo trip. I don't know who went, but I would just me, I would have expected a report go back to a committee on that trip saying what was discovered, what was used and the reasons. That's what I would, that's what I would expect, but as you, as you know, I'm an awkward so-and-so. So on this particular one, I think we've got some ideas here, which whether they come from Sweden or whatever, doesn't, I mean, it does concern me what you've said, but I think they're important ones to look at. Electric charging points are very important. In fact, there's another company I think has come to us to talk about possible uh, street pop-up um, charging points. There's some in London at the moment. And there's, possibility, there's a whole range of possibilities with the charging points. And as a commercial activity, that could be very good. That could be very good. The trade waste also, I think, could be bearing in mind what the environmental bill or act as it becomes is going to suggest. So we've got some good ones there. On solar, yes, but I think a lot of the solar stuff is gonna be not necessarily us being commercial, but I think that's gonna be planning matters in how development takes place, etc. Mr. Brace, did you wanna come back before I, we vote on the recommendation? Yes, sir. Uh, another item and to kind of uh, cover some of the things Councillor Baggett said a lot of these approaches are coming at us from a variety of different angles and um, I'm not necessarily aware of any of them coming directly from um, any visits to anywhere else they are direct and certainly in the last week we have met with a company that do e-scooters and they'd like to place e-scooters in the borough which which is an idea it's something the government are supporting um, but that's literally been in the last three or four days so the, 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 there's quite a lot happening in terms of environmental environmental protection in some way. So uh, just to give reassurance, we have got 
up-team district heating people. We've got lots of solar energy companies that are contacting us. We've got a plethora of people that are trying to bring things to the council. And I think it's important that uh, we have an officer corps that can understand what it is we're being told for us to be able to communicate that to you at this committee to believe if it actually really is a, commun uh, a commercial opportunity for us or not. Um, it would be quite frankly, you'd get bored with the amount of salesmen you'd see probably at every meeting. So we try and filter some of that to try and understand what actually is right, what actually is wrong, what would be right for Basildon. And we will bring members into that as quickly as we can once we've sifted out what quite frankly is, is, is not going to work. So we're working on that and that's why we've brought some additional resources in and I'm sure the communication between myself and you as members of this committee on commercial opportunities will increase once we get our house in order around policy strategy um, and what we want to deliver and what's important to you and that is exactly what will be in the policy. Um, and then we can filter what's coming in because at the moment we are being overloaded. So that's just a, some reassurance. It's not coming from one place, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Brace. But the recommendation on, is that the subcommittee notes the commercial update in relation to the climate environmental work programme as set out in this report. But can we also add, and we have an update at the next meeting? Because I think at some stage we need to make a decision that these are the ones we want to carry on with, either all of them, one of them, two of them, or none of them. Because if we agree that there's not a lot of commercial commercial activity in, to benefit the council in some of these, we shouldn't try and push it just for the one or two pounds in, input at the end. Are you, you voting in favour to both of you? I think Council we're asking, we want to ask questions. Okay. Councillor Rimmer first, then Councillor Baggett. Um, so, yeah, it was just on the point of these e-scooters. Obviously, they've just come up. They're not in the report. Um, is that something that's going to be included later? Um, obviously, the Prime Minister has launched an excellent scheme to tackle obesity in terms of bicycles. Um, and maybe you know, obviously other towns have bicycle schemes. Is that something that we could look in the mix? Because obviously scooters are a little bit labour intensive. So commercial and fighting the pieces. Can I, can, I come, can I come back on that? Because I don't see these as the only options. And I'm assuming that, as Mr. Brace said, there's people coming into this council on a daily basis, perhaps with ideas as a result of the, of the environmental bill and what, what the government suggests, because they think there'll be support for it. So it's, I think that any others will come, will come forward, but I think we should look at these first of all to decide if they're the right ones, are they worth proceeding? If, like the solar farm, if there's nowhere in this borough you can put a solar farm, if if you were put one outside this borough, wouldn't that other that particular borough be doing it themselves anyway to raise income? So is that worth carrying on or not? I don't know. But these are just, these are the sort of things I would ask at a later date when we've decided we've looked at these a bit further down the line. Councillor Baggett. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And the first thing is you, you're about to move, I, I've given it an amendment just to add something on to the recommendation, which is an action point. I applaud action points. I would be very inconsistent if I, if, if, if I didn't say that. Um, but you raise um, a very, very good point. And I think maybe this is something that the committee or, or chairman wants to reflect upon. And it's all about what is the bottom line? If this is the commerciality and future finance subcommittee looking at actually making money for the council, really the report I would like to see in any report that says, and this is the difference it could make. Because if the difference is, oh, and we'll save 10p, uh, you know, well, what's the point of taking up the opposite time and everything to bring the reward? If it's something that's significant, it allows us to put an element of waiting on the, the report and the context of the report. So I, I think just as a, as a process, that, that is something I would welcome in, in, in any items. Um, but also, and, and this was, I did raise this as policy and resources, but I'm going to put it on the record as well. Um, it is just the, the way the committees are structured that we have members on this committee that aren't necessarily reflective of policy and resources. 
And it's a bit bad practice that you have an item that comes here to go to policy and resources where you can get members voting against it because they didn't have the same access to information. It makes, it, it just doesn't give the impression of being joined up. And I think as well that if a report is going to be recommended where it ends up eventually a policy and resources, at the very least, the members that are on policy and resources that aren't here should be invited to attend so they have that level of information. And, and I mean, you said this yourself, Karen Harris, so the policy resources the other week, there were members there that hadn't been part of a part two presentation and therefore were then asked to vote on something where they hadn't got all the, all the, the, the pieces. And we just need to be a bit joined up. This is a really important committee. It really is an important committee because it's this that determines ultimately um, in the next uh, 10 to 15 years, uh, what sort of tax burden the public are going to be taking as far as council tax, the services that we deliver and the amount of value that we can deliver for residents. And if we get this right, we can be doing a real service to the residents of this borough. And conversely, if we get it wrong, it's, it's the reverse. So the, Councillor Harrison, uh, sorry, not Councillor Harrison, Councillor Callahan said we need to raise our game. I, I don't agree. I think the, game, the, I think the bar was pretty high under Councillor Burton Sampson. But I think that what we do need to do is be a little bit more on point. Um, and when there are issues that are raised which are pertinent, we address them immediately and move forward so that this committee becomes uh, pretty slick in its decision making. Thank you, Councillor Baggett. Can, I, I, I take the point, as I said previously, in the, before you spoke about the finances. So. The recommendation the subcommittee notes the commercial update in relation to the climate and environment work, environment work program as set out in this report and asks for an update at the next meeting of this subcommittee and i'm trying to think of the word to include i'll say the financial prospects but that's probably the wrong wording i need some help <laughs> To, to maybe um, uh, to include the financial outcomes that would result yeah, um, and and maybe even and with lessons learned from from Sweden. No, I'm not going to. No, no. I'm, I think you started a, a debate then on one particular issue on a, on a place rather than on the financial outcomes. I, I think what you said. And report back the next meeting. To include the financial outcomes where possible i'll say where possible but it might well be that at that by september we cannot do that councillor burton samson did you have your hand up or were you just scratching your head i wasn't scratching or had my hand up no <laughs> all right councillor rimmer then hi there um yeah so at, at the last meeting we were talking about profit and loss I think it was something that Councillor Baggett had raised and you'd agreed with. Maybe that could be included in the wording when we talk about financial outcomes. Now, let's talk about financial outcomes of these, of these particular items or the items on this particular report. OK, on the, with that amendment, which I think is fairly clear, I hope it's clear, can we take a vote? Councillor Baggett? Four. Councillor Rimmer? Four. Councillor Burton Sampson? Four. And myself, four. Thanks very much. Right, I've got a lot of paper to sort out. Um, six and seven we're taking together. I think. Welcome, Mr. Larkman. I think he's been here all the time, actually. But <laughs> uh, Scott, you're going to take this. Yep. Um, uh, 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 thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I, I presume um, put the presentation, or you said the presentation, or we'll have a bit of a presentation really to talk about um, uh, the challenge that, that members rightly set, uh, myself as chief executive last time around, uh, uh, various comments from, from apart from Councillor Burton Sampson, who, who um, uh, rightly uh, probably would have said the same thing uh, on the committee about, okay, so what you know? What are, what what are offers doing in terms of of, of looking at, at, at commercial? Um, and we also had the people to report around some of the challenges around the the, the commercial culture, etc. So, um, and I rightly said um, that uh, I would take ownership. And I think Councillor Bagley's points there earlier uh, um, are very helpful in, in terms of 
what this presentation I'm going to give you about is, is showing you some of the work, as, as you described, uh, that some of the, the ideas that come forward, which are coming from everywhere, uh, internationally, locally, and all over the place. But, but a, a number of companies, as you know, even when you was uh, um, a chairman, uh, lots of ideas that actually some uh, don't end up in fruition, some actually don't turn out to be anywhere near the sort of uh, monetary outcomes that are worth uh, investigating. Uh, and some that, that are not appropriate. So what, what we what we want to do is, is demonstrate um, that there was a lot more um, work that, that was going that is going on. And and Richard will take up the second part of the presentation, showing some of the horizon scanning. So when members at the earlier stage, as, as all members have asked us tonight and the last committee to get involved and, and so actually influence uh, 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 some of the, the, the pieces of what we're looking at both from a financial point of view, and again, um, I agree that uh, we're, uh, our members are saying that uh, where possible in all reports, whether this committee or otherwise, should always, always have the financial outcomes or the commercial opportunities, whether that's directly, and obviously we, we need to reflect that in report, uh, reports moving forward. So no disagreement there. But what I want to do in the, on the first slide, if you can move to the first slide, please, whoever's in charge of the slides, um, uh, is, is talk about what I said I'd set up at the last meeting was the commercial and resourcing delivery group. So that's the set of offices effectively that are now starting to uh, pull together on the back of the people two recommendations that, that members uh, agreed with um, the last committee about a group uh, coming together uh, under my uh, leadership. What's the, uh, and uh, that's what the group have done. And then following that in to bring back updates for yourself members uh, to then uh, be involved in as we take projects forward. So that is, is really what I've done. And to show that leadership, to show the pace and the urgency that, that members wanted, it needs to come from the top, which I fully accepted at the last meeting. Membership of the group is myself, obviously the section one who, who is not here this evening, um, the deputy one five Richard, who will pick up the, the, the uh, next part of this, um, uh, and, and various other uh, offices to add support. It isn't just about... Um, uh, money is about culture, as we said, as well as part of that report. And it's also about, um, and the word commercial means an awful lot of things to different people. For me, it also means about actually uh, best value, uh, looking at efficiency, effectiveness, use of resources, every penny, uh, as, as I think members have said, taxpayers' money, uh, accounts. So it's not always going to be uh, really sexy trading ideas or really great commercial opportunities. Some of the members have taken in terms of our investments. And you've got that later on the agenda as well. But also it is about actually uh, making sure uh, all, all managers and officers uh, look at ideas where uh, uh, and some wins where and save money. And some of those things go on, but they're not, uh, as, as I think um, Councillor said earlier, uh, are not always for money. They may not even get to members in terms of decision because it's about officer efficiency. So there is a lot of work that goes on that you may not see uh, that's wanted to be more transparent to make you uh, give you more reassurance around some of the work that goes on that may never get to uh, this committee because actually it's being sifted out because it actually doesn't even get past the first stage where the idea was something that wouldn't even fly out in this council um, or wasn't actually of an opportunity or was actually so costly compared to return um, we wouldn't actually spend some, some time on it. Um, uh, so uh, just moving on to the uh, uh, next slide very quickly. Um, and then Richard will take you more importantly through um, the, the, the moving forward and the rising scanning when there's more of an input. So the sort of things we've looked at on this slide, I probably want to move you to the next slide, which is an easier way to, for me to talk through the um, projects themselves that have been delivered or a delivery or have been discounted prior to the last 20 meetings. So if you can move on to the next slide, if members are comfortable, because I'll answer any questions on, on the specifics, because uh, these are related on the next slides. Whoever's that. So projects, either delivery and delivery, to give you some reassurance of what's happened in the past about commercial, actually we are doing things commercially. Um, just, just some there that hopefully members will be aware uh, happened over the last uh, a few few years, um, and those are in, in delivery at the moment. Um, uh, Beam energy, I think most members will know about cheap energy for, for local people. We work, we work in partnership. 
EDP co-location, um, which has secured a significant amount of, of, of funds directly because of sharing buildings, etc. And, and actually, at the moment, as part of the council recovery plan, um, uh, as you know, members, we're looking at how we come back safely to the building. And we may not need the whole of this building moving forward because of our new uh, way of working. And I'm hoping, because TWP, as you probably have heard, are looking to recruit more staff because of the uh, current crisis, and they will be an opportunity to, to um, allow them to take further part of the uh, uh, floor in the council where we uh, receive more, more income. Again. So again, those are sort of quick wins there that we, we would um, uh, put forward as officers to you. Um, and on that list, I think you, you have um, the investment lending report later on uh, this evening. Um, and we've already spoke about the, the contracts for you. Which, uh, again, as, as Paul rightly um, uh, said earlier this evening, is that is the start of where it's going. And again, you know, we will there first uh, look up of the procurement contracts and we will uh, take it from there. Um, it's a start of a journey, I guess. Um, and then, um, importantly, the, the people two review, um, which we're working. So we're working with Mike Butler, who you, who you um, welcomed at the last committee. And we're working on him about the programme and using him as a critical friend. And he will be coming back to you at the committee to challenge um, or to support you in the challenge offices about have they looked at all where they can look at in some of the, of the report he said. Uh, and last but not least, um, the, the, the uh, lottery there that um, uh, Cutter and Samson, uh, we, I'm sure, will be aware of um, on that one. So they're the sort of projects delivering and delivered. And in the next slide, is the ones we've, we've decommissioned, as they say, um, because actually um, they, for various reasons, um, uh, actually uh, haven't come to fruition. Uh, and I think what, we, what we're trying to do now, which was a request of the last committee, is actually bring these to you all earlier, so you're aware of, 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 of things before they're decommissioned or how they move forward and input about how do we make it work. Um, but again, um, I've, got, uh, I've got the team, and I think I've got... Um, a couple of colleagues with me that can't really detail questions on, on why some of these projects uh, haven't uh, 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 moved forward. Um, but, um, but again, an example there is the pest control will be explored with Braintree, but actually it's currently, um, we're looking how else we can look at pest control work with other councils on that to, to share the costs and save money. Um, and, um, at the moment, in terms of the lorry parks idea, uh, we've had limited opportunities. Um, actually, it has an impact negatively, potentially environment, uh, environmental uh, uh, impact. So I think part of the challenge of industrial is it can be almost in everything we do. And I think on the first slide, we said about town centres, et cetera. It can, be, it can cut across a number of areas which may not always go to this committee for final decisions, but actually we should look for commercial opportunities in everything we do. Um, uh, as I think members mentioned earlier. So I think that's really for my part, and I'll, I'll obviously take any questions, or, or Richard, uh, uh, Councillor, um, can take any questions before we move on the next of the slides, which is then more probably what you'll be interested in is actually what we're starting to look at. And to be fair, all members requested this at the start was actually, well, actually, we want to know what, what we're starting to look at so we can be involved at the earliest stage to help scope uh, uh, some of this work. So at the earliest stage, we're now going to give you as members um, uh, uh, this horizon scanning, out of a word. Um, and there's a happy, um, Councillor Harrison is the chair, if you want Richard to take through this and, and any questions on both. If we, Richard, if you take us through the rest of this, then we'll deal with all questions afterwards to Scott and, uh, and Richard. And that will be all back on screen then. It'd be easier and clearer for me to see who's got their hand up. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, members. Uh, first of all, this is the first time I've spoken, so can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, I want to, if we go on to the next slide, um, what I wanted to do with this, um, with this set of slides is uh, introduce uh, the committee to um, uh, one of the aspects of the commercial team uh, that reports to me. I've got a small but perfectly formed um, commercial team and one of them, uh, William Painter has joined us tonight. He's on this, uh, he's on this meeting. 
Uh, and also, uh, in going through this, I, I can describe to you how they interact with the services. Um, and uh, one of the ways that where where things start is that it's in the ideas generation. Um, you know, one needs a, a set of ideas, uh, things that you can look at, things that you can take forward. And they come to us in, in many different ways. And indeed, we've already had a discussion about different ways in which we might receive those. One of the things that, uh, that my team does um, is that they scan the press, they scan the local government press, they scan BBC News, uh, and they have a look at, um, well, OK, what are other councils actually doing? Um, not because if they're doing it, we should do it, but if they're doing it, we should have a look at it and understand why they're doing it. Uh, and uh, so uh, that's what we do. So I've got a few examples that I'm going to take you through. Um, I'm not going to dwell on um, any uh, in particular, um, uh, but hopefully you'll see that there's a, uh, the, there's a theme emerging here. And, and to a certain extent, you know, what other councils are doing can validate what you are, what you are doing or what you are not doing. Um, so if we move on to the next slide, please. Um, so um, here we are, we've got um, Epping, Ep Epping District Council uh, reported in the press on the 10th of June. Um, they uh, launched a new development company to deliver new homes and jobs in the borough. Um, of course, we already have uh, uh, a housing company, uh, but the thing that's piqued my interest that well, I will ask the guys to go away and see if they can find some information about is, is why have they got three subsidiary companies? What competitive advantage or economic advantage or delivery advantage do they perceive in setting this up through three uh, subsidiary companies? Um, so that will be the line of inquiry that I will pursue. Um, if we go on to the next slide, please. Um, this is Harlow Council. This links directly um, in with uh, the paper that Paul presented to you um, earlier. Um, I'm, I'm not going to read through the detail with it. I will make sure that all members receive a, a copy um, of this presentation here. But it, it's a demonstration of how all councils pretty much are looking at how can we um, deliver uh, commitments on waste, com commitments on reduction of carbon emissions, et cetera, um, but also perhaps generate an income um, as a consequence of, of doing that. Um, the interesting thing, uh, I think it's the fourth bullet point down, waste vehicle emissions have decreased by 30% following a new waste contract between the council and Veolia, which has seen investment in new vehicles for waste collection. And I think as Councillor Harrison has already said, um, in the Neighbourhood and Public Spaces Committee, I think Paul confirmed earlier, will be receiving a report uh, in September on a proposed new waste strategy. Um, if we can move on to the next one, please. Um, this is uh, Baber and Mid Suffolk District Councils um, from the um, Very Free Press. Um, I don't know if that's still in print or if it's just online. Um, again, this is focusing around carbon reductions. Um, it uh, they seeks to reduce the council's emissions by uh, quite a, an interesting uh, specific number, 5,452 tonnes of carbon dioxide per year. Uh, but the important point is the, is the third one, uh, which is that the projects there that they have identified and um, you know, Paul talked about some of these things, um, is solar ports, green offices. Um, I think that means, um, not, not offices painted green, but uh, offices that function uh, on a green basis, replacement of diesel vehicles, and greater use of technology uh, to reduce councillor mileage. Um, I'd add up to that councillor mileage and uh, staff uh, mileage. One of the um, advantages of all the home working at the moment is that the uh, carbon emissions produced by staff travelling to Basel and to work has, has reduced uh, quite considerably. Um, if we move on to the next one, please. Uh, Guildford, uh, uh, again, I'm not going to dwell on this, uh, but they've under, undergone a review of their procurement. And again, Paul Birkinshaw um, earlier, uh, the, the, the first report that was um, presented and their areas re put, put under review included uh, security, cleaning, hygiene services, temporary staffing uh, and use of procurement cards. Um, could I move on to the next one, please? Uh, South Somerset, I'm intrigued by this one. Um, has announced that it has connected a 25 megawatt battery storage system uh, to the grid. This sounds a little bit like um, Elon Musk and, and Tesla. I think, I think that that's what they were talking about. But again, that's something that can feed into uh, Paul's uh, activity. And it may be that there's nothing in it for us. Um, but, uh, you know, we need to, at the very least, uh, do an initial uh, review of, of these things that other councils are doing. 
Um, and the next one, um, uh, the next one, this one is really, um, this one's really, I find this one really quite interesting. Um, the, the government has been talking about uh, moving parts of the civil service out of London to uh, uh, other regions. Uh, indeed, there have been discussions with um, York City Council uh, to become, um, a, a, I don't know whether it's a temporary or a permanent home for the House of Lords. I think it's a temporary home while they uh, refurbish the, the Palace of Westminster. Um, but who do we need to speak to to see if there's any mileage in this for Basildon? Uh, you know, who do we need to speak to about um, getting a bunch of civil servants occupying some office space, whether it's on a temporary or, or a permanent basis? Um, and then I think the last one, which I really won't, um, is because Paul's already mentioned it, um, is that these uh, e-scoot trials. Um, the key thing about this is the Department for Transport is set to publish a legal framework. We need to keep our eyes open for is there any funding available uh, to uh, support any trials or anything we may want to do um, with e-scooters. And then my final slide um, is. Um, so what we do is that my guys uh, will, will come up with these things and I'll say, OK, go away and do some initial research on this. And they produce, we call them one pages. They, they, they produce a one pager for us. And on the basis of that one pager, we'll say, well, actually, is this in scope, this stuff that we're already doing? Are we already doing it? Do we just simply need to pass this on to somebody who's all, yeah, a service that's already dealing with this? Um, so, for example, the, the, the four in the middle emissions renewables uh, etc. Um, we would we would just hand those off. Um, are any of these actually already underway? Are we already doing it? So housing, we're already doing. We're already reviewing uh, aspects of our procurement. Um, and then we may say, well, actually, it, it it is out of scope. But but we do a triage, and then we would have a discussion with the service and say, is there any mileage in this? Uh, and as Scott described, uh, we, we we may uh, at a certain point say, no, actually, it isn't. Or we might say actually we just need to feed it into a project that, that, that's already underway or if it is a significant project that requires a significant amount of investment but equally would generate a significant amount of income uh, for the council then we would bring that in front of members. Um, that was uh, a very quick uh, run through those slides. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much Richard and Scott. I think that was uh, most useful. At the end of this, we're not asked to make a recommendation, although personally, I think we should. And that is that there's some interesting ideas there. And obviously Richard and Scott and the officers are looking at them. And some of those I think could be quicker decisions than others. So therefore, I think once again, an update on these um, at the next meeting and plus any others which are coming forward. But I think that at that stage, Scott's um, delivery group, whatever you call it, it needs to focus on the ones which are achievable. And already, I, I'll mention one, you had solar farms on there as being dismissed when Scott, I'm um, sorry, when Mr. Brace had it on his list as a one we're looking at. So, but I'll bring in now, I think Councillor Rimmel was first. Mr. Yes, oh, Mr. Scott, first of all, no, sorry. No, hang on, hang on, Craig, please, sorry. Sorry, so, sorry, um, uh, Chairman, if I can come back first on, on your point to give some reassurance before you invite further questions. Is, is uh, as I said at the last meeting, we will now bring you updates on, uh, similar to what we've done in more detail at each meeting. Um, as we uh, progress things. So the no, we want to be transparent, no surprises at the early stage, and you've all requested that, uh, no problem with that. And, and again, some things will move in and out of commercial. So so far when we looked at it, might not have been a goer, and now Paul's come up, met with somebody else that is a goer. So things will go backwards and forwards. So, um, and and again, I would echo what Paul Birkinshaw uh, said earlier in the evening. If there's any ideas that uh, members want to, that are not on, on, on our presentations, yeah, that's what the work program and that's what we're here to do so we're not yeah. we're not the only one of ideas and we welcome all members of ideas that where officers can pursue them we will only not only pursue them but bring you back updates of why it isn't uh, in our opinion worth taking forward or not I think, and the other battle or challenge is some of the ideas might not be great commercially but they still might be the right outcomes so again there will be a battle of how much of, of the climate 
uh, is more important than the commercial opportunity. So there will be things that you other committees may make decisions that may not be supportive in a commercial way. So we need to work through that with you. And I think to be fair, you know, this is, we were working at a pace and we're having regular meetings with you and I welcome all members input to make this a better program. And that's why, again, we're looking at with people to support, to build it in, into a more a cohesive program with, with members input. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Craig. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. But, uh, yes, I, I had a question on the first part of the presentation that Scott presented um, and it, in relation to the lottery. I, I was a bit um, confused by that being in there because I thought the idea was that the proceeds of that was to actually go to charity rather than it being a commercial activity for the council. So the, there was a question surrounding that in, in particular. Um, in, in terms of horizon scanning, um, I think this is uh, welcomed activity and, and it's good to see the report. Um, um, it's definitely a merit of council in doing this. I just wonder, without visiting Malmo and other international <laughs> areas, is it possible to actually broaden the scope and actually do some international horizon scanning as well? Um, because um, obviously, some of these councils are getting their ideas from abroad rather than necessarily. Um, so we, we're getting we're horizon scanning on some secondhand um, policy developments as well and commercial. Thank you, thank you, Craig. Um, obviously, if you spot anything while you're over there in Mallorca, um, let us know. Councillor Baggett. <coughs> Councillor Baggett first. Thank you, Chairman. Um, going to go on a bit I apologize in advance um I think sometimes members get criticized in a way that a member has a little bit of knowledge on a subject and then all of a sudden when it gets to a committee meeting becomes a consumer expert on architecture or um any of the other variables that that member is there uh, and that does a bit of a disservice to officers but in this case and I apologize to the committee and anybody else if this comes across as a bit arrogant in the move towards commercialization, which we've said we need to embrace and we've understood, there are some members that are in a better position than officers. I mean, Councillor Burton Sampson, for instance, without wanting to blow his own trumpets, in his own business, financial services, has worked in the city, has, you, you would imagine, a, an understanding of some of the things that, that, that go on in, in certain areas which are in the private sector. Councillor Rimmer works with the, with, 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 you know, in, in his work. Um, I have a, a small business where uh, one of them, which is about increasing profitability of businesses. And there's, there's, there's other people that are out there that have, have a similar background. Now, it's very easy in opposition to get into the habit of just saying, Yabu sucks to everything. And I've always taken the view that if you're going to knock something, you say what you do better or, or what you would do instead. And where I think that we are, what I would be doing word it down to me and soon it will um is actually just taking a different tack with the way we're approaching the the whole commerciality agenda based upon uh, what i've seen tonight and that's not saying it's wrong it's just saying could it be finessed and what, what i mean by that is for instance there were a there's a whole raft of of um ideas there that had been if you like put in the dusty bin of um weren't going to be pursued but why? I, I, you know, from a, from a business point of view, because what was it about all of these that somebody decided they couldn't make money uh, or that they weren't commercial enough? And this is the, the, the thing we were talking about earlier as well, is how much bang do we get for our book? What's the resource cost to, to the production? But I saw a couple of items in there. I thought, they've missed a trick here. And were it down to me, and I'm sure, if, I don't know, yeah, Mr. Birkinshaw is still there somewhere. This is the sort of thing that he, 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 he always grinds his teeth over. I accept and appreciate that we live in local government and therefore we have to be constrained by all the different constrictors of committee and everything else. But I'd be looking to find a way where you could have some form of commerciality think tank made up of um, a couple of business people slash entrepreneurs that are active in the business marketplace that know their onions, 
members that have got a level of experience in the marketplace and the key officers like Mr. Larkman and everyone else. Where before anything one, is... One second, Andrew. Can I ask, um, I think it's Richard, can you mute yourself? Because every time you move, it breaks up the conversation. Thank you. And, and what I'm saying is, okay, before anything gets put in the dusty bin of, of, of forgottenness, let's just stress test it and ask the question, could it be? And also, when new ideas are coming in, um, let's have a look at different angles, because people quite rightfully might be saying, oh, well, this particular thing, we could, we could attack it from this angle, and it doesn't fit a criteria. But with a fresh set of eyes and a different perspective, could say, but hang on a minute, if you did this, you'd be on to a chicken dinner winner. And, and I just think we're missing a trick by not having that bigger perspective um, and variance of view available before we start discarding options or even coming to options. Um, and the, the other point that I was going to make, but uh, my, my colleague, um, uh, not stole it, but uh, got to it before, I, I totally agree with, with, with uh, Councillor Rimmer's point uh, as well. Um, and that is something that we should be giving um, credence to. Thank you, Councillor Baggett. Right, Mr. Logan, do you want to come back first? Yeah, yeah, got, uh, yeah, I can come in first to to to, to answer certainly uh, Councillor Rimmer's point. I think a, a point will will make uh, Councillor Rimmer uh, the lottery is a commercial idea, but clearly the donations weren't put back into the council. So, but the point being is. The challenge is around um, commercial ideas. So we're giving you a round of things we've looked at, both with member input uh, uh, as well. Uh, and your point is, um, <coughs> excuse me, is that um, we do look everywhere in terms of commercial opportunities. Where would they come from? Uh, Essex or the wider area? It, you know, we're not we're not precious. Uh, uh, and, and I think part of the challenge is is our capacity to 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 manage ideas, sift ideas, uh, uh, as as you uh, said there. And I'll come back to, um, uh, and to for the first part of, of um, uh, Councillor Baggett's point, um, and I dare say, Paul, as you said, uh, um, uh, Count, well, Mr. Birkinshaw, as you called him, may want to come in around the, the committee, as you said. But but the, the, the reality is, you know, we, we welcome members' ideas, uh, all members' ideas, uh, and we aren't precious about where the ideas come from. So whether they're from, from members and, uh, uh, and have got some ideas within the programme, that's one of the reasons why we're, we're, we're trying to bring this to the committee to, to actually challenge some of this around and what's missing, whatever ideas are out there. Uh, and I can certainly assure you, if you have any good ideas out there that we can look at, officers will pursue that um, with, by whatever means. Uh, and if we haven't got the expertise on any specific area around commercial, then we would look to uh, uh, bring that in from wherever we would, would need that. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Can I just say on the point Councillor Baggett raised about the reasons, I, I do tend to agree. Um, we said no to this, this and this. Um, it could be, it would be useful to know why. Uh, for instance, the crematorium, it might well be, so I think Councillor Burton Sampson will agree this was discussed last year. And then I think there was a question of where it could be a possible site, the limitations in relation to the distances they've got to be from other crematoriums, etc., that make things not a good act, good commercial activity. So, but I think if those reasons are explained on an honorary on the presentation, such as you did this evening, I think that will be more beneficial not only to us but to the public who are watching to explain why this council didn't go down that road. Whereas perhaps another council has gone down that road purely because it's in a different situation in that part of the country. Richard, did, sorry, Scott, do you want to come back? Yeah, I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back on that, that exact point, um, uh, Chairman, if you want. Uh, and uh, and to be fair, I think Kangsta Baggett knows this because I've been talking about the Sims and, and Krems for when he was leader and my passion to try and get one in because I think actually it's a no brainer. And we have brought in consultants to help with it. But I think your, your point is valid. It's a, trying to find the right location and bear in mind where the location is in Basin, maybe in the green belt and may have other local plan issues. So unfortunately, sometimes uh, there are reasons that, that are not necessarily commercially why we wouldn't do it. But mm. I, I will, I do actually think it's a fair point, uh, Chairman, and you're raising about that actually in future meetings to come back to, we'll give you more information. This was about looking back as we look forward. 
which is one of the reasons why I brought it here today to actually welcome yeah. your challenge and then bring these points to when we bring something back that we believe we can't take forward for whatever reason it might be, we do that before we put it in the bin, I think, as Councillor Baggett said, for your, for your input. Um, and equally, before we, we take or put lots of resources into projects that are going to go further forward, equally, we'd welcome your priority and input as well. And that was the purpose of the saving to, to bring us up to speed of where we are. And that's why probably more important is the horizon scanning. But we do want it to be transparent about what we have, we have looked back. But I have to say on a number of ideas, and I dare say William or, or Richard can correct me because they're more in touch with us on a daily basis, as you can appreciate. Some of those ideas that we may have put in the bin, maybe we're all coming back out again as they resurface. So, uh, but I'll ask Richard to, to build on that. Richard. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, I just wanted just to add to the lottery, um, the lottery bit. Uh, the reason I, I did debate whether to include it or not, you know, on the basis, very much on the basis of what you said, Councillor Rimmer. Um, the reason I did include it uh, is because the commercial team made it happen. You know, if, it, if the commercial team had not been there, it would have been difficult to make it happen. So they made it happen. So they need to take a bit of credit for that. But also, um, also, I think it's, it's, it's important that, it, that it's there. The Mayor's charity um, will benefit by something in excess of about £5,000 per annum as a result of having the charity. And the Mayor's charity, even though it's independent of the council, uh, it plays a role in the council being able to deliver the outcomes for residents uh, that, that, it, that, that it wants. So, uh, and uh, I felt it's a good example of, you know, not losing sight of outcomes, yeah? Um, so that's why I included it in there, because um, uh, the team did very well to set that up. Um, I think in terms of the, the point about um, ideas that have been discounted, I, I do take the point um, uh, very much about, well, why have they been discounted? Um, uh, Councillor Baggett's point about missing a trick, you know, my answer to that is yes, we might very well have missed a trick, um, a, a, indeed, uh, which is why I would, I, as Scott has already said, um, I would work, you know, I welcome in, input from anybody on, on, on anything. Though, of course, we need to get it in front of those people so they know that we've considered it. Uh, at, Absolutely, and, and whatever the correct mechanism for doing that, I personally, I would welcome it because, um, you know, we, we do all have our own um, individual experiences from our, um, uh, from our previous working lives and the working lives that you may follow. So I would welcome that. Um, and then I just wanted to pick up again the point about, uh, about discounted things as well. And, and Scott, Scott's made it, but, but I think it's worth um, emphasizing is that um, uh, we don't just put them in the bin they're there yeah and part of our horizon scanning or part of discussions with officers or with members might might prompt us to say well actually we looked at that and we can't quite remember why it is that we stopped doing it so let's get that out let's have a look at the reasons why we stopped doing it and do those do those reasons still apply or has something changed in the environment which means that this is now deliverable yeah and we are very much alive to that so the SEMS and CREMS angle, uh, it seemed all quite difficult from a planning perspective, but then we got a bit of intelligence that a couple of neighbouring councils, and I won't name them, a couple of neighbouring councils might be pursuing the same type of idea. Yeah, they, they might be interested in uh, 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 providing a, a crematorium. So what do we do? We find the relevant officers and we start talking to them because there may be mileage in doing it that way. Um, and... Uh, uh, the solar farm one again. Uh, the reason the solar farm was discounted was for all the reasons that that, that Scott's already mentioned, planning, etc. But also the feed-in tariffs. Uh, the government's been gradually whittling away at the feed-in tariffs. It made it quite difficult. Um, but something may have changed in the environment, which means that actually uh, it's worth dusting it off again and looking at it. Though I would suspect that the um, excuse me, <coughs> I would suspect that the planning issue is still pertain. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Richard. So can we just agree tonight then we to note what's been said and there'll be a regular update at each committee on this on these particular two items It's really one item in effect because they overlap. The members happy with that? Councillor Rimmer. I'm, I'm generally happy but Councillor Baggett came up with a great idea about some sort of feeding in forum. Is, is there any way to capture that? Yeah, in my, in my view, 
I think at this stage, I think it's with officers, but I think if members of this committee or of the council have ideas, we come forward. I'm sure to the chief executive, I think it'll be important. I take a point Councillor Baggett made earlier in the meeting about other members of the policy and resources for argument's sake who may have um, a contribution to make. I see no reason, not in a bit of voting right, exactly the same as I go along to policy and resources when I can and um, listen, I can speak, but I can't vote. And the same could apply to this subcommittee. Um, my, my particular on the Neighbourhood and Public Spaces Committee at various meetings, members have asked to attend to speak on an item, as Councillor Rimmel will know, for he came to one, I think. And yes, I, I don't see any problem with that. And I'm sure whoever's chairman of this committee would not oppose that to happen. Councillor Baggett. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to move an amendment, um, and the amendment uh, would be on the lines of, uh, that officers consider the feasibility of setting up a commerciality think tank made up of officers, members and um, appropriate entrepreneur, local entrepreneurs with a view to feeding in and supporting the commerciality subgroup uh, by way of adding value to any ideas being discussed or items discarded where there might be the approach of creating uh, additionality or additional commercial opportunities. And I'm sure this is being recorded on YouTube, so I would need to repeat it. Repeat it. No, I'm, sure um, you, I'm sure you've got a seconder as well. Just put your I, I don't know. Um, no, I, you know, we live in a democracy you, in, in conservative land. Already. Can, I, can I just say, I understand, I understand where you're coming from on that. My concern from what you've just said would be, at the moment, we've given the chief executive the, the task of using this delivery group to come up with the some ideas, etc., and work with officers. At this stage, I think it, it, it would be wrong to say, let's bring some people in from outside before we've really got going, who it's like saying, we haven't got enough confidence in Mr. Logan and Mr. Um, and Richard to perform this task initially. Mr. Logan said he welcomed any ideas coming from anywhere that would support them. Yes, I agree. But as I said, I see, proposing no, them. I see no reason why members and people they know, we ideas can come forward. Councillor Burton Sampson first, then Councillor Rimmer. No, I was just going to really back up what you just said, Chair. I mean, there's no there's no monopoly on a good idea, and there's 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 um, you know. Um, uh, ways and means, uh, whether you're in, in, in administration or opposition, to bring those ideas forward already. Um, and certainly, you know, I was sharing ideas on, on uh, you know, for example, the lottery. Um, before we were in administration, it was something that I was talking to officers about and saying, look, here's a, here's a possible thing we could do that could generate some money for local charities and so on and so forth. And that obviously developed when we, we came to administration. So I think there's no, no monopoly for a good idea and there's, there's, there's ways that people can bring them forward as it is now. Um, and we need to be cognizant of the work that's already happening um, and officer time um, and resource as well. Um, so it, 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 I think, I think Councillor Baggett's right that other members should be able to bring ideas forward. Maybe members need to be aware of how they can do that. Maybe that's the answer to this. Uh, I think putting in another forum to bring ideas would possibly be the wrong thing at this precise moment in time. Before I bring Councillor Rimmer in, can I just make a suggestion, Councillor Bagger? I'm trying to get so come some of, sort of agreement from this committee that we ask the Chief Executive to come back at the next meeting with a possible suggestion in the way forward in how we can bring um, more, not mostly more people, but more ideas into this event in commercialization to uh, that, the chairman that was my recommendation that officers um, come back with a report as to the feasibility of it so all you've just done is confirmed what i recommended in the first place having well, you, said yeah, that you I, didn't, I didn't quite get it was simple as that yeah it was as simple as that 
the so officers come back with a, a report as the feasibility of setting up a um, commerciality think tank to support the uh, current officer working group um, with the idea that that think tank could be made up of members of um, the political, uh, the elected members, officers, and uh, elements of. Let's let's leave it at the first part of what you said. Well, no, let's let's not because my recommendation. So you can vote it down. Um, but let's keep it as I've recommended no, because that's, that's the way it tends to work. At committees. It, your recommendation that time got even longer than the first one. No, I didn't. Is it possible just to confirm the final recommendation? Sorry, Councillor Baggett. Yeah. Um, that officers come back to the next meeting of this committee with a feasibility report as to the viability of a think tank to support the officer commerciality group, said think tank to be comprised of members, officers and any willing local entrepreneurs. Right, right. thank you. You've got a seconder. Councillor. He does indeed, and I, I wanted to speak on this as well because... Okay, can I just... Um, can I make a point? And I did have my hand up and you were going to bring me in, I believe. As, a, as I'm chair, I'm going to say something first. Can I just say that at the moment, there's not a recommendation on this uh, re report, so that becomes a recommendation not an amendment, becomes a recommendation. Am I not correct? I am. Yes. I'm getting the nod that I'm correct because there was no recommendation on here. So that is the recommendation. Could you read it out again for me, please, Annie? Um, I didn't manage to write all of it down, I'm afraid. But- um, Do you want me to do it again? Yes, yes please. Can, Thank I, you. Can, I move, can I move an amendment to it then? Can I move an amendment to it? Well, can, uh, well can, we, can we vote on the one first and then you can move your amendment? Because that's the way it tends to work at committees, in my understanding of how committees work. No, no. You vote on the amendment before the recommendation. Okay. If she doesn't know what my recommendation is, how can you move an amendment to it? I was just going to delete some of it. <laughs> it's the pieces. I, I want to stop at the stage where we ask the chief executive to come forward with an idea for a think tank. We, we've heard how you're thinking. Uh, Councillor Baggett, and I think the Chief Executive has probably heard that as well. So let me bring him in first of all then, because he's going to be the one who has to... Scott. Yeah. Um, sorry, Democratic Services are putting their hands up first. I don't know whether they want to okay. say something and bring me in. putting their hands up. This is interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to clarify, as I see it, Councillor Baggett has put forward a motion because as you rightly say, there's no recommendation already here. Um, and you can put forward an amendment to that motion. That amendment is either then carried or lost. Whatever comes after that is a substantive motion. Then you vote on the substantive motion. Am I right in saying that actually I put my hand up to speak to that motion that had been put forward? Mm -hmm. uh, before somebody put their hand up to put forward an amendment and that I should have the right to speak. Yes, when, um, I, call, when I call you, you will have the right to speak, yes. Yeah. Can, Mr yeah. Logan. C can I try and bring some, some clarity to what members are asking for uh, and maybe a suggestion to, to pick up all your points is, is uh, um, I, I come back to the, that uh, we... All members, and, and certainly for the last few years, all members of all parties have come up with many different ideas that some have, have been taken for, for or not, and I'm more than happy to write to group leaders to, to encourage that from the wider member group, if, if that is, is something you, you would request. Uh, and in terms of um, your uh, Councillor Baggett's point around members' officers, this is what this subcommittee is. It is a group of members that actually work with officers, which is one of the reasons we're bringing this forward. And, and as and when... Um, one of the reasons people too were there, as and when we need to bring subject experts in, quite clearly, I don't know, and I'm sure some of the team haven't got all the answers, as, as members have, have rightly said, and um, we welcome any support, but at the right time, I think the, the point of a think tank is we'd only want that when actually uh, it's appropriate. So I would probably, my suggestion is actually let's uh, carry on the way we were going first of all, and as as and when ideas are coming forward that we have not expertise, 
or the well is dry and we aren't coming forward with ideas, then maybe we need to bring some entrepreneurs or, or other people in. But we've just engaged with uh, a people too as an outside body to help with some of that. And, and they proposed a way forward at last meeting. Um, and that's obviously what we're bringing back to, to this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Mr. Councillor Rimmer. Can you hear me, Chair? Sorry, I've, I've got a really unsafe internet connection here. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, apologies. I, I lost connection for a second. Um, so, in respect of this, I think this is a really innovative idea that's coming from Councillor Bagger in terms of the think tank. It's bringing in the expertise of entrepreneurs who have an interest of giving their advice, which probably be charged by the hour at um, incredible rates for free. And actually, we're talking about horizon scanning. We're looking at local other local authorities. We were just discussing why not horizon scan in terms of international opportunities as well. But why not horizon scan in terms of private enterprise and the ideas that they could actually apply to some of the problems that we have and actually in terms of bringing better financial outcomes for the council. It's, yes, member ideas for sure. And there are other channels for that. But that sort of dynamic interactive discussion that could take place in a forum with other entrepreneurs and with our officers and members, that what, that's what makes this idea that Councillor Baggett has come up with so innovative. And I think that's something you could potentially embrace and Councillor Burton Samson could embrace as well. And that's why this idea would be great to look at the feasibility of that. And, it's, and if we look at it, uh, it looks like we're losing uh, non-runner make a decision sorry did you lose part of me Only the last no the last word i think whatever the last word was <laughs> okay i was just saying if we can get a presentation from officers on that forum on that of, of business people of members of officers all interacting um, i think it'd be worth it then we can make the decision then there's no reason to make the decision now we can make the decision to look into it because it's an innovative idea. And if we've got our sort of green hats of innovation on, it's something we should accept. Thank you, Councillor Rimmer. Can I first of all ask the Annie, have you got the wording, Annie, or your? Yes, yes. So it was um, to ask uh, the Chief Executive to come back to the next meeting to come back with a feasibility report of the viability of a think tank with said think tank to comprise of um, members and relevant entrepreneurs. W would you say that's correct, Councillor Baggett? And officers. And officers. I do apologise. Yeah, I assume the think tank was going to have the officers in anyway. Yeah. No, no, but it's, it's good to be explicit because otherwise officers will deliver on what you've asked them to do, and quite rightfully. And yeah. while, while I'm on, um, just it's very rare that I disagree with Mr. Logan. But on this, this is where we, 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 we do fundamentally disagree. I've said, and I'm, I'm as passionate as him when it comes to the commerciality and getting the, getting the council into um, a really good position, commerciality. But what I've also said is that to do that, you can't think like a civil servant and you can't run, um, you can't run entrepreneurship like a local government because the two are incompatible. I wouldn't trust any council, no matter how well run, to run a supermarket or an airline or anything like that. No disrespect to officers. It's a different way of thinking. It's a different format. Um, and, and I've said it before, and, and sometimes people, I think, willfully misconstrue what I'm saying. If officers were going to be budding entrepreneurs, they'd be out there being Richard Branson's, making fortunes and sunning themselves in Mallorca and places right now. Um, and civil servants are incredibly diligent and, and re work really hard in their sphere, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are attuned to all levels of commerciality. And we are giving them great disservice by expecting them to be coming up with all the ideas without supporting them in every way possible. And that's what I'm trying to do here, to be able to allow this council to do the very best commerciality that it can by giving a wherewithal to achieve that. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. 
Councillor Burton Sampson, did you wish to come in? No, nothing, nothing more to say, Chair. Okay. Well, I was going to move an amendment, but having heard it read out now, and as asking the Chief Executive to come back with that, I don't disagree. I can see parts of it perhaps I might disagree with, but the overall thing of trying to involve as many people as possible, but I don't want it to be seen as we're just um, going down party lines to bring our, for people in on our party, your party there to come in and sort of, it's our ideas, not their ideas. Because one thing I do hate and have hated in the last year is when you, you decide to do something and someone says, oh, we started, that was our idea. And I don't like that. I don't like that because on my particular committee, we've carried on with some things which your administration started previously. We've started some new things which we've started. It's been fairly supportive across the committee generally. And I think that's the way this council should operate. Um, anyway, I'm in the chair tonight. So we'll start off with me in favour. Councillor Burton Sampson. In favour. Councillor Baggett. Obviously in favour. Richard Branson is in Mallorca. Sorry, it's Craig, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in favour. Right, that's unanimous, thank you. Right, we'll now move on then to the work programme, which is pages 29 to 31. My print has been very busy, I tell you. We've added a few things to the September work programme. Apologise for that, Annie. Um, but they're there, and officers. Any further comments from members to add to the work programme? In that case, whoops. I'm just breaking up, sorry. I'm throwing things across the room. In that case, we'll vote on the work programme. Um, I think it's just for noting, Councillor. Yeah, just Is for it? noting. Why is it every other committee we agree the work programme? Because every other committee on the work programme, I've noticed that the opposition have wanted to vote against. Can I recommend that we actually vote for the work programme? Oh, I think we should. I, I think so. Vote. Can I move that? I don't know that anybody wants to second well, it. I'll, I'll, I'll move. We're going to. I moved it first. I moved it before you. <laughs> this careful, careful. Okay. You move what we're going to move. I'm going to move. No, we, we, we vote for the work program rather than noting the work program. Yes. So, so to vote for work program. Right. Councillor Baggett, your vote first then. I need a seconder. Oh, I'll oh, second. Was that Dave, uh, Councillor Harrison? It. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, coalition. I vote for. I vote for. Councillor Rimmer. I, I vote for. Sorry? Four. Four. Councillor Burton Sampson. Four. Right. That's the work programme done. Right, item nine. Sorry, I thought that was a vote on whether we voted for the work program. No, I thought that was voting for the work program. I thought it was voting for the motion to, to for, vote the, for the work to vote for it, and now we need to vote for it. I think that wording was very complicated. <laughs> That's why I'm not Democratic Services. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> right, all those in favour of the work program. Councillor Baggett. Four. Myself, four. Councillor Rimmer. Four. Councillor Burton Sampson. Four. four. Thank you. That is agreed unanimously. The danger in your motion, Councillor Baggett, was the use of the word four. <laughs> right, we come to item nine, exclusion of the public and press. The public and press be excluded from the meeting during the remainder of the meeting on the grounds that it was like that if a pub, members of the public and press were present during these items, there will be a disclosure to them of exempt information. All those in, well, we need to vote on this. Councillor Baggett. Abstain. Councillor Rimmer. Abstain. Councillor Burton-Sampson. 
or myself in favour. Right, that's the public and press excluded. Okay, Councillor, if you give me a few moments to switch off the recordings. Yes, would only be like three or four minutes. Scott. Uh, sorry, uh, Councillor. I was waving a bit earlier, but you, you, were, you were reading it out, so apologies you didn't see me waving. Um, again, uh, uh, I, I, I take uh, uh, Councillor Baggett's points and we'll bring that report back, as I said. But again, I, can I, I would urge members, uh, as you described, you know, we, we, to use the work programme, because actually, what, if we just say, can we bring it back to the next committee, we do need to, a capacity to manage it over the period of the work programme. So again, it'd be really useful to spend time on the work programme and say, in, in future about the priority order as well. So again, we can not everything goes to the next committee that we can stagger out that the priority order would be helpful moving forward, Chairman. I apologise, Scott, but you know me. I, I, like, I like to move quickly while I'm here. And I agree with Councillor Harrison. It's nice to see people that have a sense of impending doom about them. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, Councillor, are you happy for me to turn off the recording on YouTube now? Yes, I thought you'd done that. <laughs>